One year and one week ago, I got my first look at this, the 2021 Ford Bronco. Now we are here on a hot, hot summer's day in Austin, Texas with the production model. We're gonna take you for a spin, but before we do that, let's get reacquainted with the Bronco. Ford gave us a whole host of Broncos to choose from, but I went for this one for a few very specific reasons. First, it's a two-door. Two doors are cool, four doors are gonna be more common, but this is much cooler and the proportions are better. Second, I went for cyber orange because that's the hero color and it looks kinda good. But most importantly, I went for a Badland spec without the Sasquatch package. Now, that means you still get a very high performance off-road vehicle, but not quite as insane and therefore not as compromised on-road as you would with a Sasquatch. Coming around to the front of the car, there aren't a ton of Badland specific options. Now, yes, you do get this really cool modular steel bumper. You can rip off these end plates and attach all manner of winches and brush bars and lights and whatever else you might need. You do get a rather snazzy grill. Again, we have shown you how to rip that off. And on every Bronco, you get these really neat trail sights that help you figure out where the corners of the car are from behind the wheel. Now, if we come along to the sides of the Bronco, you can see these standard unpainted fender flares. If you go with the Sasquatch package, you do get a bigger arch, but I kind of like the way that these look. And to be honest, they're very easy to swap out. So you could get the Sasquatch flares later if you wanted to. This car also has the standard unpainted three-piece hardtop. Now there will be a modular roof available later on and you can get it painted in body color or in shadow black. But for right now, this is what you have. These two panels come out, this entire back piece lifts up and you have a convertible. There are a whole bunch of ways to spec out the interior of a Bronco, and as it turns out, this one is spec'd how I would have it. It has the optional leather upholstery. This is an option over the standard waterproof marine grade vinyl. It has this fuzzy roof, so instead of just plain panels, there's a bit of sound deadening in here that does a lot of good to help with wind noise. And of course, there's the modularity concepts that you get. All of these silver bolts that you see on here and on the doors, you can replace those with approved accessories. It gives you the ability to craft this cabin into exactly what you need it to be. Considering the Bronco really only has one primary competitor, the Jeep Wrangler, Ford could have been excused for kind of cheaping out on the interior. And in a few areas, they did. But by and large, this is a nicer cabin than what you'll find on the Wrangler. It feels sturdier. And yes, there is a substantial amount of plastics, but the high traffic areas, this grab handle, the shift lever, the knob for the goat modes and the, and the four wheel drive systems, these all feel very good and very sturdy. It sounds good. I, I don't remember the last time I drove a V6 powered Ford that sounded good, but this engine sounds really throaty and, and appropriate for the Bronco's purpose. The power is ample. I mean, there's a lot of low end shove and a lot of mid range punch that allow it to allow the Bronco to feel smaller than it really is. What I don't love is that there is a fair amount of turbo lag. So driving this, driving the Bronco with this engine requires just a little bit of thought. You have to think about, you know, am I gonna have to suddenly accelerate coming up? Am I gonna have to climb this hill? And you kind of precondition the turbocharger by adding just a little bit of pressure to build up the boost. Now, even though you can't get the six speed manual with the V6 engine, the 10 speed is nothing to be disappointed with. This is the same gearbox that Ford uses in the Ranger and the F-150 and to a much less exciting extent, the Mustang. It performs really well here. Shifts are quick, it engages quickly off the line. And if I suddenly stand on the throttle, drops two gears, no hesitation whatsoever. It is performing exactly as you want a gearbox to perform. Ford's decision to go with an independent front suspension is rankling purists that want off-roading and solid front axles and all of this nonsense. And I get it, I, I really do. But for the 99% of Bronco customers that buy this vehicle, this is the setup to have. It is so much more pleasant around town. The entire vehicle, it reacts better to sudden bumps. If you hit a bump on one side of the vehicle, you're not wrestling with it to, to keep control. There is no death wobble in this vehicle. One of the Wrangler's other noteworthy issues is that it's, it's a pretty loud place at anything north of about 40 miles an hour. There's a lot of wind noise, there's a lot of tire noise, and it's just not all that pleasant. 
And to a certain extent, the Bronco has some similar issues. The road noise is far better control. I'm, I'm on 33 inch tires right now and there's not much in the way of tire roar. There is a pretty substantial amount of wind noise and that's despite having this sound deadening hardtop here. You know, I, I hate to keep comparing it with the Wrangler, but it just invites such natural comparisons. The, the seating and cabinet environment is very, very different. Where on the Wrangler you have this short dash with very little space between you and the windshield, the Bronco has a longer dash and it feels more open because of it. This feels like the roomier cabin. There's plenty of leg room. The console isn't like hemming you in like it is on the Jeep. But the seats aren't that great here. So I don't have as much support as I would in the Wrangler. It just isn't quite as comfortable. The sight lines are very good. This front window is huge. And out the sides, you get these very long side windows, so the blind spots are minimal. Looking out the front, though, is, is the best view because you just have this huge, flat, long, wide hood. It is, it is like driving a much older vehicle. This is a very, very wide vehicle, especially on some of the country roads we've been driving on. But it is something to keep in mind if you live somewhere with smaller roads or a lot of traffic or narrow spaces that you have to get through, the Bronco might be a little bit too much vehicle. Once you run out of dirt, the Bronco continues to impress. This thing is every bit as capable as a Wrangler, and in a few important ways, it's better. One of those is trail control, which is essentially off-road cruise control. Press the button on the center of the goat mode dial and then hit set plus or set minus on the steering wheel to select half mile per hour increments. Then simply take your foot off the brake and the Bronco will clamber up and over whatever obstacle is ahead. But it also feels a bit like cheat mode. Repeatedly during our off-road testing, we reach for trail control to take the guesswork out of off-roading. Even without trail control though, the Bronco's well-tuned throttle made surmounting obstacles a painless affair. The six-cylinder EcoBoost engine provides plenty of oomph, but even the base turbocharged 2.3 liter had enough low-end torque to keep us happy. An impressive 360-degree camera suite, meanwhile, allowed us to know exactly where the front wheels were going, offering us four different setups, including one that looked down on the front tires for precise placement while rock crawling. While we spent most of our time off-road with a 10-speed automatic, Ford is offering a manual transmission. Controversial as it sounds, though, we'd pass on the no-cost gearbox, which requires drivers to sacrifice trail control, trail one-pedal driving, and trail turn assist. After driving every powertrain, every body style, and nearly every trim of the new Bronco, what's clear to us is that it is just as capable as what the guys across town are selling. But what we also learned while driving in Texas is that it is more livable. For most customers that are gonna spend 99% of their time on paved roads, this is a better SUV. For much more, including a full first drive, be sure to check out MotorOne.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and wherever else you get your social media.